Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Vibe with Kai podcast. It's your boy, Kai. Today, I'm thrilled to have once again returning guest, my friend, Chelsea Macaron, the founder of Healthy Minds and More Counseling Services, licensed mental health counselor since 2016. Chelsea believes in holistic wellness, combining mental and physical health. And she's here to shed light on the value of therapy and its distinction from life coaching. Chelsea, welcome back. You're becoming like my most frequent guest. Hi, thank you guest. for having me again. You're, you're like my most frequent guest. I love it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yes, absolutely. Um, no, th- I, 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 I love this topic because this is actually something that um, my audience asks me a lot, you know, in regards to like, okay, should I get a therapist? Should I go to a life coach? Should I, you know, talk to like my friend who just happens to know mental health a little bit, you know? Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love people have having people like you on, because like, I always tell people, I'm not personally a mental health professional. All I do is I use my platform to share my story and to lend my platform to people like you who do have this expertise, that do have this knowledge and this insight to provide, you know, professional, insightful resources and tools and and all of that. Um, so thank you so much for, for being here. How are you? Is everything okay? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Business is good. I just hired another therapist. Everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That that makes me that makes me happy. Um, I, I want to dive right How into this. Oh, How I'm good. You? I'm good. I feel good. It's so we're you and I are recording this on a Saturday, and it is uh, in the Northeast where I live. It's been so gloomy and rainy, and like about an hour north of me, New York City is like in uh, it's like underwater. <laughs> so it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's really bad. Like if you if you go on the news with after this and just look up New York City floods, it's bad. It's really really bad. Oh no. Yes. yes. I mean, you wouldn't know by looking now, but we've had gloomy weather too. Like it's been raining for like a week. I feel like because you're down in Florida, I feel like gloomy for you is like a solid sixty five with mild mild rain that will go away in like half a second. Sixty-five inches of rain or sixty-five degrees. Uh, well, you have alligators too, so I guess I guess you win. We don't have alligators up here, <laughs> so so no, you... did you say did you say, did you say sixty-five degrees? Oh yeah, sixty-five degrees. Yeah. No, no, it's it's like eighty-five, <laughs> like see, eighty-nine. Today. See, yeah, there's no such thing as eighty-five degree gloomy weather. That's not a thing. No, it's just been raining for a week, like just hot, muggy rain with gray skies, except for this morning, this morning, but it's muggy out there. It's but it's gross. 85. It's you walk out and you're like. It's 85. You know what? It's 60 where I am right now. 60 degrees and gray. That's so all the things you mentioned before <laughs> and it's colder. I win. It's, that sounds wonderful. Can it's we a weather. Just, it's a hey, weather. Hey, hey. This whole episode is going to turn into who who has it worse the, <laughs> the weather northeast or florida i think florida wins but like i'll be honest <laughs> yeah i'll be honest yeah it's gross down here <laughs> um no thank you so much for coming back thank you so much for for talking about this i want to dive right into this because i want number one i want to start off by helping people understand the basics here right so can you take a moment and just describe the difference between a psychotherapist and a life coach like what is the what is the difference for people that don't know well, <laughs> so first, first, I want to talk this with, you know, if you are kind of in the space of do I go one way or the other, just, you know, both psychotherapy and alternative forms of support, they have their place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they should definitely be chosen based on individual needs and severity of issues that are showing up, right? So keep that in mind. I'm not bashing one over the other, obviously. Um, I think when talking about the differences, sometimes it it might sound that way, but I think maybe just that's my bias because I'm a psychotherapist. You're you're preparing, you're you're um, prepping yourself so you don't get angry DMs from life coaches being like, how dare you? (laughs) One of my dear friends is a life coach. She's wonderful. Uh However, she just doesn't have the same training as I do. Mm -hmm. So we can go into the list of differences. I kind of, 
I already kind of made bullet points because this is kind of my I OCD. Love <laughs> I love it. The floor is yours, my friend. Um, so the first first one, and of course, this can be conversational, guide, but the first one is is clinical clinical expertise and training. Um, there is some training for psycho or for um, life coaches. I don't know what it is because I'm not a life coach, but psychotherapists are highly trained professionals. They specialize in education, clinical training in psychology, some, some, sometimes even psychiatry, social work, counseling, those types of things, right? Um, so there's a rigorous academic background um, and clinical requirements usually statewide um, to become a, a, a psychotherapist. Um, so, you know, keeping that in mind that they, they know like a broader range, you know, um, life coaches and professional friends may not have the same level of training. They might not have the same level of ethical guidelines. Um, so, so that's something to keep in mind too. So I don't know if you have any questions on that. No, I think, uh, I think you answered everything. That's all we have time for my friends. Have a good night. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> okay, no I think we answered the main question of the, of the okay. podcast. So I think we're, I think we're good. I think we covered everything. Um, Let's go back to talking about weather. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, okay, cool. so I want to, um, yeah. I, I want to flip this over to the to the side of the person that's seeking the help itself, right? What's the? Mm -hmm. Why might somebody seek out a psychotherapist as opposed to a life coach and vice versa? Like how? How? Like because both, like as you as you said, the qualifications are different, right? Um. But like also the reasons that you go to them would be different outside of the qualification side of it, I guess. What? Why would somebody want to reach out to a life coach as opposed to a psychotherapist? Just to kind of, I guess, play devil's advocate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, you know, I, I honestly, I mean, there's less red tape that a life coach mm. has to go through. So, for example, if I was seeing a life coach and I moved from Florida to New York or whatever, I could keep my life coach. Whereas with a therapist, if they're not licensed in the state that you move to, you can't see them. And so mm. there's that red tape that kind of creates a, a problem. So maybe that would be a deciding factor. Um, but because of many of the other reasons that I will list, I, I personally would not choose to go to a life coach, even though one of my dear friends is a life coach. Um, and she's a great friend, but as far as like mental health and mental wellness, I would want to really see somebody that's got that trained ear, that trained eye to kind of see, you know, maybe a trauma history, um, mm -hmm. different diagnoses. And, and you know me from our past conversations, like I'm not a diagnosis queen. I am very holistic. I don't believe in labeling people. Um, but if you see some of the threads and some of the themes of one of those diagnoses, then you can tailor your clinical care um, a little more accordingly. And so although I might not label someone as borderline personality disorder, right. but I might say, oh, there's some traits here. So I'm going to shift the way I treat them to have the best success rate and the best outcome. Right. Are the I mean, and I know you, you, as you mentioned before, like you are not a life coach yourself. So like that there's, there might be life coachy type mm -hmm. of questions that I, that I ask. but I'm like, I'm curious if you do know, are, like, are the goals different, you know, for when a, when a life coach goes into these sessions with a, uh, with a client and a, and a psychotherapist, are the goals set differently? when when like say some say like for example um, i have adhd all right and i come to like if i come to mm -hmm. you versus coming to a life coach to help me manage my adhd like is the goal different at the end of the day or does it depend on the therapist i think it depends on the therapist um yeah. and it depends on how the life coach was trained which again i don't know how they do goal setting yeah. sessions i know with therapy um we're taught this thing called the miracle question mm -hmm. um <clears throat> So basically the miracle question is, okay, Kai, if you were to fall asleep tonight um, and overnight your fairy godmother, whatever, like a miracle happened in the middle of the night and you woke up the next morning, what's your day look like? And that's the miracle question. And through that, we can pull out what your goals for therapy are. My, my miracle is happening right now. I woke up and I'm like, it would be great if I got to interview Chelsea Macaron from Florida in her 85 degree <laughs> weather. And look at me now. Thank you, fairy <laughs> godmother. You made my dream come true. 
<laughs> I like that. I like that. What are, exactly right. <laughs> this is the Disney Channel, and then I just wave my wand. Um, what, <laughs> I'm dating myself right now. Um, what what are some other differences? <laughs> What are some other differences between <laughs> psychotherapists and life coaches? So with mental health assessment and diagnosis, right? Um, psychotherapists can diagnose mental health conditions. They can mm. provide evidence-based treatment. Um, and discussing accurate diagnosis is crucial for effective treatment, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, even though I'm not going to, like, stop on the diagnosis with somebody because that follows you forever, but I have an accurate depiction of like what's going on clinically, so I can I can tailor my treatment. Mm -hmm. um, life coaches don't necessarily have the qualifications to diagnose or even treat mental health disorders like illnesses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that that would be one difference. Um, in, in, and while talking about treatment, like evidence-based interventions. Um, so psychotherapy is grounded in scientific research. It offers a wide range of evidence-based interventions for various mental health issues. Um, life, coaching, life coaching often kind of lacks that scientific foundation. Um, sometimes they rely on like anecdotal or unproven methods. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, maybe not so bad if you're like going through like a tough like time in your life, but like if you have uh, psychosis or yeah. if you have severe depression or some ADHD where it is a clear cut like this is my diagnosis like I really need like a tailored evidence-based intervention life which probably isn't for you um because you need something a little bit more in-depth trauma right. history substance use like all of those things I would highly recommend against a life coach right and one of the things that you had mentioned before we started doing the interview is the concept of a professional friend, right? And and as opposed to like going to a professional friend as opposed to a, you know, psychotherapist. Can you explain what is a professional friend and how do I, really good and how do I make friends? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a really good question. I've seen two situations where there were these professional friends. One was like Instagram. So like an influencer was like, I'm going to become a professional friend and like talk to you oh. about your problems and stuff. And I was like, oh gosh. Oh, wow. I went straight to the comments. I was like, comment. <laughs> and wow. all these therapists were responding, like supportive, but they were like, you've got to be careful because there's all these like licensing things. And like, you want to make sure you're insured because you might get sued and like all this stuff. So like wow. people were supporting her. Like, this is a great idea. However, <laughs> be careful. Um, so that was one thing, and that was actually where I got the idea for this talk um, mm -hmm. was when I saw that. And then another thing was um, I, I had a client that was talking about um, becoming like a professional friend because people get like lonely and bored and all this stuff. So I went on this like rampage, like not rampage, but this like search thing with him. Yeah. And like we went down this rabbit hole and there are websites where you can pay for a virtual friend. You can hire, hire a bridesmaid, wow. you can hire a friend, hire a date, like all these things. Yeah. And so professional friend, I think it could be great. Like, honestly, like, okay, I have to go to this wedding and I don't want to go stag and I don't know anybody that, can, you know, whatever, like cool, yeah. a filler, but as far as like, like lonely virtual friends that you're just talking to and typing to and like yeah. whatever, be careful because you really don't know their credentials. You don't know. Um, I mean, even life coaching has more red tape than that. So, wow. you know, I think, I think just, if <laughs> are you, uh, let the record show to the audience. Uh, Chelsea Macaron is actually my professional friend. I pay her to give me attention and validation. <laughs> she's here because the, because the check cleared yesterday so no <laughs> that's that's funny because like so when you had mentioned professional friend it's funny I wasn't even thinking that I was thinking like oh I have a friend who happens to be a therapist and so like they can provide insight but like they provide biased insight because like like they kind of like me you know kind of thing and so like I didn't even think that people <laughs> like I didn't even think that like people would be like hey I'll be your friend give me a hundred dollars 
<laughs> it just doesn't seem genuine. I feel like, like well, I, I know, like they, I know that their the intention is good, and I know that like they mean well, and like it could obviously legit help people in in some fashion. Um, oh, but like, right? Like, because like here's the thing. Because here's a friend to me, right? Let's just say like. I let's just say I'm running on a hard time financially, <laughs> right? And like I need a friend right now because life sucks. So you're saying that if I have a professional friend, but like money's hard right now, you're like, hey, listen, bud, I know life is hard. I'm happy to be your friend, but I'm not gonna be your friend for free. <laughs> so call me when you get your shit together. Yeah, and I'll be your friend. Yeah, I find it. Yeah, I found a website. I didn't. I don't necessarily like know anybody that contracts and does that. Yeah. So really, if you pay for the subscription, you have access to your friends. Wow, that just doesn't seem genuine. But I'm also speaking from a position of ignorance right now. So like, because this is this is a new concept for me. So uh, just please know after this after this podcast, I'm going to be <laughs> learning all about this. I'm going to be learning all about professional friends yeah. because that's fascinating. I, I never really thought of that. Yeah. I think conceptually it's really, really good. I mean, think of how many people felt isolated coming out of COVID mm. um, and like lost their social skills and like right. all that stuff. Like, I think, I think like theoretically it's a really good idea. I just, I caution it. I caution against using it as a form of therapy versus mm. a form of connection. I mean, people, think about it. people do that all the time on like dating apps. They're not on there to mm. date. They're on there to text and have a pen pal. You know what I mean? And so yes, that's it. Yeah, I people think are on dating. People are on dating apps, Chelsea, strictly to talk. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm talking about. Those people that just I text do. and they never actually meet you. I mean, I'm married. Yes. It's been a really long time since I've been on a dating app. But back in the day, <laughs> when I was, I'm like, you oh, couldn't, man. like, hey, do you want to hang out? And then we just fizzle out. And like, are you here for a pen pal? Like, what are you doing? Like, can we meet up? Like, what? Yeah, anyway. Sorry. That's and a lot funny. of girls have that issue where it's like yeah yeah i get it. do you think that there do you think it's a possibility do you think it's a possibility that psychotherapy can be paired with life coaches do you think that there would be a benefit in that or do you think that would be too much and can possibly possibly conflicting i think i think it could be a good pairing depending on um the presenting problem and pretend like depending on certain things. So like, for example, like I have a pregnant mama or postpartum mama mm-hmm. now and she's going through it. And so I recommended that she get a postpartum doula. I don't see how that would be any different than me recommending like, Hey, why don't you get a life coach? Um, you know, maybe the, the, and, and not in her stage of treatment, but like, you know, maybe we go through treatment and things are starting to look really good, but she still needs some of that support. Um, but clinically, it's not necessary for her to be in therapy. So why not phase and hand off to a life coach? Um, you know, somebody who can give her the support, but she doesn't need the interventions anymore. She just needs right. like motivation and empowerment and encouragement and all that stuff. Right. Sure, why not? Right. right. I'm sorry. I'm still on this professional I just thing. Don't like, I'm <laughs> fascinated. I am fa- I'm like, I have a whole list of questions <laughs> here that I want to ask you. And I'm sitting here being like, I need to learn more about this professional friendship. Like, I have a date, or like not a date. I have I have a um a wedding that I'm going to in October, and I need a date. And I'm like, man, I need to hire a professional friend. <laughs> I go stag. I know someone. <laughs> I know someone that'll probably go with you, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, and, and they're, and they're listening. Listen. They're listening right now, and I I know exactly what their face is right now. And what they're doing physically, and I and I love it. And you know it. Too. By the way, by the way, I want to tell you something. And this is gonna a little side note. And everybody listening is not gonna have any idea what I'm talking about, but that's okay because I like letting people in. So what's really funny is that um, so you had texted me the other day about uh, the uh, a certain type of person that I like dating, right? And I, mm-hmm. I and I was telling our mutual friend. That I had, I don't think I had ever told you that. D- did I? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Okay, then never mind. Because yeah. I was sitting there, I was telling them, and I was like, "How did she know?" Because like I've never 
told her that, but apparently, apparently I did. I'm a therapist. I remember things. <laughs> That's now I know. Where, thank you for being the best professional friend I could ever ask for. I pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> for, and heard. <laughs> to let to let people in a little bit. I like. I I have I man I have a thing for women of the Latina commun- community. I like Spanish. Yeah, all three of my best girlfriends are Latina, so there's. That. <laughs> I've never dated a Spanish woman before. I've always wanted to. Apparently, I told you that. <laughs> Don't remember. I. So, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna have to do a lot of editing, apparently. <laughs> so, so, everybody listening right now is is like, "What the heck is happening right now?" I don't know what I'm listening to. Um, <laughs> so okay, so it's about you had mentioned um how you approach things like holistically, right? Um, yeah. and I and I was curious, can you explain to the people that don't know what holistic wellness mm. is? Because like I I know like I like I know um, what it is but and so when you say it, I'm like oh yeah that makes sense but there might be people that were listening being like what the hell does she mean by that what is holistic wellness? Yeah, so and I don't know if this is like the proper Webster like term. So there might be one person on the internet going yeah it's not it's this story um, of my life <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> yeah, like okay, please, um, but. The way my interpretation, there we go, my interpretation of holistic wellness is the whole body, mind, and spirit, number one. So you're treating the whole person. And then holistically, in a sense of, I don't run towards like medication and I don't run towards like this American way. Like it's just reminded me I have to take my medication. um, (laughs) Just reminded me. You said, said, I don't don't prescribe medication. Like, Meanwhile, I'm staring at the medication that I need in order to survive right now. Um, I'm sorry. Please continue. But that's, that's a different story. That's a very different story. I, I think that, especially in our culture, like people are overdiagnosed and mm. overmedicated, honestly. That's another and, topic we can talk um, about. I think we're now. not looking at our nutrition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think we're not looking at nutrition. We're not looking at like work life balance. We're not looking at these other things. Mm. So, like, my first response, so like, okay, so I had this client, here's an example of holistic health. So I had this client that was talking about how like they weren't sleeping and they weren't able to focus and da, 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 da. And they're like, I don't know if I have ADHD. Like, I don't know what's going on and da, da, da. And I'm listening to them talk and I'm like, how are you like feeling health-wise? I feel, I feel, I feel five. And I'm like, you sound like you're getting sick. Mm. Like, and he's like, oh. I am actually kind of congested. Maybe that's oh why I'm tired, right? So, like, I'm not it's not ADHD. To... It's the common <laughs> head cold. <laughs> um, good that he's also like a psych major. <laughs> Probably oh, no. in the ADHD class. It's not. Um, <laughs> it's not depression. It's diarrhea. Like, I... That's one of it. So like ruling out medical stuff, like ruling out health stuff, like not just jumping to this is what's wrong with you. Um, I, so I have this like one client, the postpartum mama, I referred her to a, a holistic healer. She's a chiropractor, craniosacral therapist, hypnotherapist, like acupuncturist, like all this, right. And, you know, I personally used her for my daughter. Like, so my daughter had like a tongue and lip tie and they wanted to do surgery. And I brought her to this person and she like did like this, like massaging of the mouth and like stretching and whatever. And it was a lot less invasive. There was like no healing process. And the tongue and lip tie was like magically healed so it's like we run to these invasive procedures because insurance pays really well and we don't look at these alternative medicines and so I guess for me I'm like what are we doing outside of that before running to like okay you're having trouble functioning what's your sugar intake oh you feel depressed are you eating a lot of sugar and then crashing like what's going on what are you eating what are what's your life look like are you stressed out at work are you having migraines or are you really depressed so who's I, like I, I I hate playing like the blame game here, right? But I want to make sure mm-hmm. that like I I I really like dive into this. Whose fault is that though for overdiagnosis, mm-hmm. right? Because you had just mentioned earlier in the podcast that psychotherapists, you know, the licensed therapists, all these people 
like they're the ones that are prescribing things and people shouldn't go to life coaches because, you know, possibly because they don't have the insight and the knowledge and all of that. But we're also saying that where people can go to get diagnosed, people are getting overdiagnosed. So whose yes. fault so- is that? Is it the, is it the therapy industry or is it the people that are just looking for help? So I think part of the problem, managed care, that's an, but that's another topic for another day. But I think the other part of the problem is we are seeing an uptick, uptick in, in depression and anxiety symptoms. Mm. And I think what happens is because we get paid for treating those symptoms, we have to diagnose them as that. And then they're pumped on anti-anxiety meds and antidepressants versus depression, anxiety symptoms, plus diagnosis, and then holistic treatment. Let's talk about your sleep hygiene. Let's talk about your relaxation and meditation uh, practice. Let's talk about your work-life balance. Let's talk, where is this depression and anxiety coming from? And is it something that is treatable? Because right now, as a society, we're overworked, we're underpaid, we're freaking out. The housing market is crazy. Like, there are things that we can't control that is causing Maybe in Florida, not not New Jersey. We got it all handled. Are Are you being... We got Seriously it all sarcastic. figured <laughs> out in New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> yes, I'm being very <laughs> sarcastic. Um, no, that's very, it's very interesting, okay. that, you, it's very interesting that you say that because like, it's very interesting that you say that because like, like I, like at what point, because like, uh, like, and, I, and I, I hear you, like, I agree with you, like looking at other things first if anything, like the sleep schedule, work-life yeah. balance, how you're eating, like all of that first, right? At what point for you, and I know it's different for every therapist, but at what point for you does it cross a line that you're like, oh yeah, that's depression or oh yeah, that's ADHD. At what point is that line crossed when yeah. you're talking to a, a client? I will tell you, I'm going to close this door really quick. Though, That's I can't fine. No problem. In the um, meantime, I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, our sponsor is the state of Florida. Come down to Florida. Do you like alligators? <laughs> I don't. Florida. Welcome back, friends. I'm here with Chelsea Macaroni. Oh, <laughs> I'm here with Chelsea Macaroni. Uh, Chelsea, welcome back. Uh, we just heard from our sponsor, the state of Florida. Uh, so we're, when we last, <laughs> we last left off... <laughs> Um, I had asked you a really great question um, <laughs> that I don't remember yeah. right now because I got distracted. No, so here's the line. Like, where's line, the line, yes, right? The line, so the yes. line. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, it's, uh, it's what's the functioning, right? Occupational functioning, social functioning, all that, right? Like relational functioning, like um, personal hygiene functioning, right? And so I think that there's a level of... Uh, where it's impairing the person, that's when we need to start looking at medication mm. plus treatment. I don't believe in medication without psychotherapy because okay. then that's just a Band-Aid. Right. Do, you, do people ever like, I don't want to say argue, but like disagree. Like you're like, they're like, hey, I'm, I think I have ADHD. And then you say, well, I think that this, this, and this that has nothing to do with medicine. And they're like, no, I think I have ADHD and I need medicine. Like, w- like, cause like people know their body. That's not how brains. I Like, like how, like, yes, do you that's not how push I back? No. So, so if a client came to me and said, I think that I have ADHD, I'm going to lean into it and I'm going to say, oh, okay, tell me more. Tell me why. What's going on? Um, I, I don't, with, with clients, I'm not going to be like, no, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I did have one client um, that I literally went through the checklist of a diagnosis with them because they really didn't think that they had this diagnosis. And we went through the checklist. Yeah. And she was like, oh, yeah, I had all those markers. And I was like, this is your diagnosis. This is what I've been trying to explain to you. But it was a hard diagnosis to, to I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to mm-hmm. put it out there. But um, Just it, tell you know, me their name, their address, and the social security number. That's all. <laughs> That's not much. I mean, she might listen to this podcast, so I don't, I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, I um, understand. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Do you ever... Um, no, you like, hey, that is-, do, is it is it scary at all? Like, to 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 do this? Like, because people are, like, I don't want to say putting their life in, in your hands, but, like, they're really looking to you for guidance 
because their life you know, is not where they want it to be, or they're, tr they're having trouble managing things. And they're really trusting you to like, help them. Um, do you feel yeah. that pressure? Is that hard for you? Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I had had one client um, who is still battling cancer. Mm -hmm. Um that was kind of hard because I can't fix the cancer mm -hmm. and I can't, can't fix the feelings that come with it. Yeah. So, you know, being present, holding space, like all that stuff was very draining. Like I would, I wouldn't see clients after her. She was my last one of the day. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that, that kind of stuff is hard, but you know, I, I work anxious and life transitions and like postpartum parents or like even pregnant parents. Um, so that kind of stuff I love. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, give me the anxious, give me the anxiety. Like that energy is just, I don't know. I, I enjoy it. I'm like, yeah. and maybe it's because there's something concrete to, to do with it, you know? Yeah. Whereas right. like my, you interviewed my friend last month, Andrea, she does a lot of like death and dying and grief work and stuff like that. Yeah, that's I'm like, actually oh. her, I'm interviewing her. <laughs> I'm interviewing her next week and it's about grief actually. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she told me. <laughs> oh, great, cool. I don't know why I brought it no. up. Then. I'm well, kidding. She was like, I'm she was like, she's like, it's a con. It's like he's like a comedian, and she's like, I don't want to like talk about death. I'm, I'm like, not no, a he's comedian. Gonna love it. You're gonna laugh. I am a content well, not a comedian, creator but... that uses levity. <laughs> okay, well, I use the word comedian. She did not. Um, <laughs> I did it to shorten the story. And I then think it rolls off the tongue. In content fact, creator <laughs> that uses levity rolls off the tongue that is what's on all of my business. A mental health humor yes mental health humorous there we go I, that's what i use look at you doing your research i want to do a quick lightning round with you before i let you go um and and well let's do no, it so and right before right before i do it i want to and if there if there are any life coaches or or uh professional friends that are listening i'd be remiss if i didn't offer my platform to you as well so like uh, like, I would love to get your insight on this. If any of you want to come on the pod and like talk about your experience here and all that, please hit me up and I would love to have you on and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a time to sit and chat. Cause I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, offer, if I didn't offer some insight there as well. Um, okay. So fun lightning round. Are you ready? First thing that comes to your brain. Yeah. All right, here we go. If you had to describe therapy okay. in okay. three words, what would those three words be? Supportive, empowering, and safe. What is the most motivating book that you've ever read? Speed round, baby. Let's go. Motivated? Putting you on the spot. Most motivating. She turns it. You could say Harry Potter. Ah, I, I'm thinking of all these books, but they're not the motivating books. Like I have the, the book that offered the most help, the book that was the most inspired, well, not inspiring. This is, you're, you're not doing that. Like, this is lightning. This is more of like a, I'm not doing well like, a like a casual thunderstorm. It's not lightning around. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm so you, sorry. How do we find and influence people by wow. Gail Carnegie? How, how, how dare you not be prepared, be prepared for a question that you did not know was coming and you had 10 seconds to answer? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Sorry, I've read a lot of good books. I mean, You're good. And the You're motivation good. word is what was happening. <laughs> um, what's the first Dale, Dale Carnegie? <laughs> what's the first song that comes to mind when you think of the word therapy? Oh, I just listened to this this morning. Um, Shake It Out by Florence and the Machine. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is because it's literally about feelings and moving your body to get regulated again. I like that. So Shake It Out by Florence and the Machine. For me, it's Shake It Fast by Mystical. Great lyrics. <laughs> Great. <laughs> motivating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shake it fast. Watch yourself. Shake it fast. Show me what you're working with. I mean, on, it doesn't... <laughs> listen, ther therapist around the world. That's how you should start every session by reading the national anthem of therapy. I like it. Shake it fast by Mystical. I like it. 
I'm just the saying. reason that this one came to mind is because I was literally talking with a client about this yesterday yeah. and how they did it in one of her classes. And I've never heard it. And so we did it this morning. I, I've never heard it. So I'm going to listen to oh. it like this. Um, if you could have dinner with okay. one psychologist that you've never met, alive or dead, who would it be? Probably Carl Rogers. Carl Rogers. I'm going to shake. I'm going to shake my head and act, and act like I know who that is. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I understand. So Carl Rogers is like the founder of client-centered therapy. You don't have to tell me that. I already knew, but you could tell the audience. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> that's it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, if that's all you're going to say, I could have told you that. Either him or My friend Carl Rogers. Yeah, either him or Mnuchin. Okay. Yeah, him or Mnuchin. Mnuchin was the one that told the teenager that he was a dumb thief. Mnuchin, is, he got he's, Mnuchin and I go way back, he and I. We were friends. I don't think these guys are alive anymore. We were friends in high school. He was on the football team. I was on the basketball team. It was drama. They did the same person. It was really awkward yeah. for a moment. I really um, think <laughs> Really great friends, he and I. Um, last one. Uh, before a session, do you prefer having coffee or do you prefer having tea? Mm, I'm not a huge tea person. But I'm all mm. so this is my this is my during session set up right here. I have a big tumbler of water and a big tumbler of vodka. I, I'm reticent to say coffee. No, I'm reticent to say coffee because there's so much oat milk in here <laughs> and a dash of creamer. Um, and I sip on it all day. So it's not so much before session. I like nurse. Got it. Got it. Um before before i let you go because i know we have a hard stop i want to i want to ask you just one thing for anybody that's listening what's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody who is just starting their mental health journey like they're like i don't know if i want to go to a therapist i don't know if i want to go to a life coach i don't know if i want to save my money and get a professional friend if somebody's on the fence about all of this what would you say to them right now can i give them two pieces of advice sure absolutely Okay. So the first one, and it, I guess it's more words of wisdom, less advice, but the first one is um, bravery is not about not feeling fear. Bravery mm -hmm. is about feeling fear and walking through it. Mm -hmm. So if you're afraid, be brave, walk through the fear and just do it. The second one is uh, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Ooh. Ooh. That yeah. was nice. That was so deep. So if you're... Yeah, yeah. So I think, it, and when I'm talking about preparation, like you said, like there's all these different alternatives. There's all these different um, things that you can use. And <clears throat> I think there should be a little preparation. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to just pick anybody haphazardly because like you saw, you saw like different therapists have different um, uh, specialties. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to me for grief and dying, like it's, mm, call you want to call my friend <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you want to call them if you're right. in anyway um but you know so you want to make sure at least you're doing some preparation with yeah. with looking for who, who you want um mm -hmm. as far as life coaching i mean i would say if it's like a, a menial thing like and it's not like this deep traumatic or yeah. this deep like thing that's like causing this hiccup in your in your world then maybe a life coach is good for you but i i would always start with the trained therapist first mm -hmm. and then see what see where that goes i love it i love it chelsea thank you so much for for dedicating your your saturday morning to hanging out with me and my crazy self um honestly th thank you for this conversation i think it's like it's really important your wisdom your insight helps us navigate this really crazy difficult world of mental health guidance because there's a lot of options out there so hopefully people were listening and watching and got some got some clarity and some and some um insight and, and guidance out of this so honestly thank you my friends uh if you're listening watching right now remember every step that you take in your mental health journey is a step in the right direction i believe me i'm proud of all of you for just taking the step in the first place so whether it's uh therapy life coaching chatting with a friend and giving them money uh, whatever it is, whatever feels right to you, follow your heart as long as you feel as as if you're going on the right path. And I'm proud of you, honestly. So my friends, thank you to my guest, Chelsea Macaron. I'll include all of her information in the notes of this podcast. My friends, stay vibing, stay strong. As always, much love, good vibes. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.